The mission of the Global Peace Building Foundation is to contribute to the building of global peace by supporting organizations and projects that restore, rebuild, and transform relationships that have been broken due to prejudice, stereotyping, hatred, and fears that may have accumulated over generations. While the challenge of peace building is great, person-to-person -person activities and outreach done at a local level can succeed in transforming lives broken by prejudice, hatred, and fear. Peace Players International does just that by bringing youth together in areas affected by conflict through basketball and peace education. Now, when we traveled to Belfast to visit the, the operations of Peace Players International in Northern Ireland, our, our main goal was really to observe on, in, in the field, on the ground, what they were doing and if they were doing what they say they were doing as part of the due diligence process. We wanted to see firsthand how the peace education curriculum was built into the basketball integration program. And also we wanted to uh, get a feel for the culture and the history of the Troubles. Peace Players Northern Ireland is part of an ongoing effort to build peace after a 300-year conflict between Catholic nationalists and Protestant loyalists. Before the Good Friday peace accords were made in 1998, Belfast and other cities lived through what is known as the Troubles, a violent 30-year period characterized by petrol bombs, police clashes with protesters, and guerrilla warfare. Signs of the centuries-old conflict and still simmering division are everywhere. Neighborhoods are distinguished by flags and murals, and physically separated by 30-foot-high walls of concrete, steel, and chain link called peace walls. The newest wall went up as recently as 2002. They have been turned into artworks of commemoration, nationalist and loyalist pride, and dark warnings. 94% of schools in Northern Ireland are still segregated. Peace Players works with over 20 schools to bring students from different sides onto the same court. The premise is that children who play together can learn to live together. In the early weeks, it's very, yeah, it's very, very basic passing, shooting, dribbling, those kinds of skills. These schools all have uh, personal development and mutual understanding curriculums that, that they're um, required to fulfill. Mm -hmm. um, so we have our curriculum and we match it up with what they need to do um, uh, within their school. Um, and we say, well, here's our session plan, here's, what, here's activities we do, here's how we meet these different uh, criteria. So it is a learning experience for the kids. And they're really curious about things like the idea of sectarianism. They're very curious. They have a lot of questions. And their teachers really won't answer them because they don't feel prepared to answer them or don't know what to say. So the some teachers, teachers in their school. Teachers yeah. will say, you'll talk about that with peace players. Oh, okay, yeah. And so then they come in and they have a million questions. Peace Players utilizes games such as Good Team, Bad Team, in which students are divided into two teams based on an arbitrary distinction, such as clothing, and try to figure out what the discrimination was based on. Generally, that game hits home because they were like, you did that to see... Uh, for us to see what it's like to be discriminated against us and then what it's like to be treated differently. And you're like, yeah, exactly. You know, um, so I think the biggest thing with these games is giving them the, the opportunity just to, to feel that and then apply it. We don't say, we don't, we don't tell them, don't you, don't you discriminate based on religion, that's terrible. We say, well, did you like when, it, when, you, when that happened to you? How did it feel? The value proposition of the Global Peace Building Foundation is to offer due diligence and accountability to donors. Partners must meet four criteria. Programming focused on youth and children, a peace education curriculum, financial accountability, and an evaluation and monitoring system. Yeah, the due diligence is really uh, determining whether the organizations are doing what they say they are doing. It's really that simple. We go through a thorough uh, background, background check on the organizations. We look at their financial statements. We review their websites. We uh, look at the blogs. And it's really an ongoing monitoring process. But we also uh, dig deeper, and, and we really want to get to know the organization. So we visit them at their corporate headquarters. We also, it's very important for us to get to uh, view the activities on the ground, what we say on the ground. We really want to ensure that the organizations are doing what they say they're doing, and also the donors feel comfortable with the money they donate that they know it's going for the designated purposes. It's going to take generations to uh, transform that part of the world 
into a uh, more of a, a stronger, peaceful environment. The work of Peace Players International is just one organization that is working at the grassroots level with youth and children to affect their attitudes and to shape their perceptions differently than what uh, prior generations have done. The organizations we partner with do transform the lives of the youth and children that they're working with. So we look at it as a very much of a very cost-effective and high-impact process, the ripple effect. So the work of a few can affect the lives of many.